I got, I got, I got, I got. Welcome into the DML Network. It's your boy, Expert, and I got a special show today. It's Madden 22, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll go over everything we think about Madden 22, what they did right, what they got close, and then what are they far off on. And we love doing this show, and I got two OGs in the building, two guys I love working with. First up, it's Mr. Sim F-Ball Critic. What's going on, Sim? What's going on, man? Nothing Maybe. much here, man. Good to be back with you, brother. No doubt. Glad to have you on the show. And of course, if I got Sim in the building, you know I brought Smitty too. What up, Smitty? Yo, what's cracking, man? Glad to be here, man. Rock out with you guys. No doubt. It's been a while since we've been on the show, but let's let's just jump into it. Madden 22 out. It's the game we all love to play. We've grown up playing it. The Michael Vick days, the Ray Lewis hit stick. We've seen it all. And now we got Madden 22. And let's talk about what did Madden get right? What is the good stuff of Madden 22? Because we spend so much time in the Madden community bashing EA, and we see it on Twitter and social media all over the place. This is messed up. That's messed up. Fix this, fix that. But they did get some stuff right. And I want to get y'all's opinion. What did EA get right in Madden 22? Sam, I'll let you go first. Man, I'm going to tackle the easy one because I'm sure I'm going to miss a couple things. And you guys are probably catch whatever I miss but what they got right in my opinion which I actually love every time I play the game is player movement player movement to me well let me preference that <laughs> not across the board but as far as the person that you're controlling the controls that you have when you're running the football the cuts that you can make it's more it's getting more realistic even like with the uh the route running, you know, you can see the developments of that. I can't say that player movement is fantastic, though, because there's still those instances where, you know, we'll talk about the bad, but there's still those instances where, you know, guys can twitch if they click on and things like that. But for the most part, the way the game moves with the ball carrier or whoever you're controlling, that's one of the things that I, I hate to say they got right because you can always improve, but... I think that's that's one of the, the bigger parts of the current Madden, in my opinion, um, amongst other things. But like I said, you know, I'm sure you guys got things to add on to that. Yeah, I, I think it's going in the right direction, like you say. I mean, we can go back and look at some other Maddens, the Madden 19, 20, 21, and say the movement now in 22 has taken leaps and bounds where it needs to go. And, and like Sim said, it's it's not where it needs to be. I mean, let's not say, okay, EA, you got it right. Don't touch this. This It's still a part that needs to get improved on because there are some instances where you see it reverting back to the old ways. But definitely, I think player movement was probably one of the best improvements for Madden 22. I really love that. Um, Smitty, it, not just player movement, but what's something else that you feel Madden got right in Madden 22? Um, oh, hmm. The best, well, I will say this. Uh, the quality of the animations they have. Um, they do a good job of adding authentic types of animations in it. The problem is they're too tethered. But that's one thing I look at every year just like Sim and I talk about on the show we always talk about you know we do talk about like how Madden has like these nice looking animations that can play out especially in those catch instances where they're separate which is not often but when it's separate and the animation that is selected makes sense to the situation it's like man it's it's a beautiful thing it's just we wish we could bottle that and spread it all over the game you know and um same thing with the with when it comes to the trenches like when you're running between the tackles and pushing off the back of the def of, of your alignment and stuff like that it's like they these are things that the quality and the frequency of them triggering they they improve a little bit uh more each year 
but uh yeah that's like really the the bright spot that i could say for yeah. me so all right so we we've talked a little bit about movement animations what about on the franchise side did they get something right on the franchise side sam because as a as a hard franchise league here in the dynasty you know those are the things when we when we look at at every madden coming up we're always looking okay what are they doing for franchise and and we saw kind of the franchise movement before the game came out to kind of force them to put some stuff in maybe they had those things already ready to go but is there something in the franchise side sim that you saw that they got right (laughs) man this is a difficult conversation because most of the things that i feel like they got right is halfway done and it's going to spill over into the the bad and the ugly but i'll say if i'm gonna keep it i'll keep it generic until we dive into that just implementing newer features and franchise is one of the things they got right and what i mean by that is the the idea of doing it because again we all know the fixed madden franchise hashtag and we caused a lot of stir, caused a lot of commotion, and it did cause them, you know, force them to start implementing more in franchise. But I'm going to be honest and say, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything right now that I can say they got that right outside of the idea to invest in franchise mode. Because there's, there's a lot of things that, to me, that are on the cusp. And one of the bigger features that they... They just they kind of disappointed me on because they could have went further, but I'll, I'll definitely save that for when we dive into the bad and the ugly. Gotcha, gotcha. What about you, Smitty? Anything you saw in franchise that you felt like they got right? Um, and and no is an acceptable answer here. Smitty. Yeah, I was about to say like <laughs> I was about to say like uh, to be quite honest, no, but like I would say it, it's kind of echoing off of what Sim just said, man. It's like. They put in skeleton. They put in a skeletal template, right, right, that you can take and say, okay, from a bone, from a bare bone level, yeah, this is something that you could build from. Right. But to say that you know, um, I can actually take this and and be proud and play and have fun with it, no, nah, it, it feels no different than last year. Or and or these basically any of these years it's been uh, since Madden 13. It feels very dry, generic. You're going week by week, uh, and that's it. I don't want to go into the negatives. I'm sorry, but you know it's it's bone basic. That's it. <laughs> oh, sit. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it. We'll get into that. Sim said oh. there is one thing. There is okay, one thing. What is, go, go ahead, Sim. Sim. Go ahead, go Sim. Ahead. <laughs> It is one thing that I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it because it's something that I wanted for a long time along with Shopmaster. <sighs> Again, it's hard to say it was right because it was broken earlier, but the progressive fatigue yeah, and yeah. allowing you to have that as well as the deciding the full and half pads, I do think, you know, you could improve that, but I got to give them credit for that because that's yeah. one that pounded the table religiously for and great I didn't know it was coming they put it in there so I I gotta give them credit for that one yeah definitely progressive fatigue and you see it maybe not in weeks one through four of your franchise but as you get deep into the season and you're relying on that guy over and over again and you're pounding him in practice and you're not you're not fully developed as far as how that program works when you're going into practice are you putting them in half pads are you letting the backups i mean there's a lot of things involved and if guys just go into a franchise and play a game after game after game they're gonna end up getting guys hurt and you're starting to see that um you're starting to see guys have to be more aware of what's going on in the when you're not just playing the game in between those weeks and so progressive fatigue definitely i think is one of the good things And, and, and i'll i'll piggyback off what both guys have said both Sim and Smitty it, it's we want to say this is good we really do like we want to get on these shows and we want to say man EA knocked this out the park and they did this great and they did this and I think they're they're at the edge and I think you know both of you guys can agree I think they're getting to that point but now it's about where does it go from here 
because you can't just say, okay, we got to this point. Now we can take a couple Maddens off. Franchise guys should be happy. And we'll talk about that um, here when we get to the bad and the ugly about franchise updates as we get closer maybe to an NCAA game coming out. Um, but before we go any further, I, I got to give a plug to my guys. Um, you know, Smitty and Sim, anytime I reach out, these guys jump on the show. And they are part of the Sim Standard Podcast. Make sure you guys on YouTube... If you're here, make sure you go over to Sim at Ball Critics channel. You hit that follow button, that subscribe button, because they dive into not just Madden, but so many other things. You don't want to miss the Sim Standard Podcast. I know you guys are off for the Christmas break. They're going to come back in 23, getting ready to go. I mean, 22, getting ready to go for the Sim Standard Podcast, picking back up. Okay, but now let's get into the bad, because I think this is where we're going to have the biggest chunk of the show of what did EA think they got right but they just completely dropped the bag here for Madden 22 and Sim what's the what's the most glaring thing that you see in Madden 22 where you go yeah that that didn't work that you didn't do a good job with this feature oh man <laughs> man it's so many things man um it's so funny X because we we probably will end up having to do two or three of these shows because it's stuff that you're going to remember later <laughs> um from a gameplay standpoint, I'll tackle that first. I think where they dropped the ball, in my opinion, because I, you know, just putting some side information out there, I had caught wind of them attempting to go away from two-man animation. Um, little Birdie actually mentioned that to me, and I was like, okay, we'll see. And then, okay, they come out and they tell us that they are trying to go away from that in the catching, but here's the problem. And I knew this from the beginning when I read that that blog, when they said only for certain situations, meaning rat catches. That's the issue. Because to me, I, that lets me know that they're still kind of slow poking it and attempting to remove things that to me would make the game so much better. And I think they just didn't do a good job in that area. Now, is it good with slants? And drag routes, yeah, it is. If you click on, you're not going to get pulled in. But there's just other opportunities there. And, and on top of that, I'll say this, to add to that, the passing controls. The, that was my first question. Well, what did you do with the passing game? Because if you're going to allow this, can I now place the ball where I want it? Or is it still going to be tethered to certain animations, which we all know the ball is still tethered to certain outcomes. So that's, to me, that's the most glaring. And I know that might not be everyone's, you know, everyone's thought, but to me, and, you know, people I'm sure that are watching, that watch your show, listen to your show, kind of, they, they may have heard of us and know what our background is and being having a connection with EA at, at right. one point. These are certain things that I identify immediately because it's the stuff that I've been looking at for years upon years upon years. Like, okay, let me see how's this going to work? How's that going to work? So that's probably the first thing that jumped out to me in the gameplay area. Just not enough separation yet with animation, two-man animation, two-man sequencing. And that, that to me, just kills the game. It kills the immersion at times. Do you feel that they fixed, at least tried to fix how you did place the ball? Maybe trajectory is different in Madden 22 than we've seen in previous Maddens. You know, that was one thing we've, you know, Anytime we've ever gotten together, we've always talked about that of allowing linebackers or safeties playing at linebacker to just completely disrupt everything from a one man, you know, roam in the field. Do you think they fixed that part of the game? I do think there's a lot of improvements in that area. You don't see too many of the super LBs. I mean, there, there's still times, though, that I think that user input overrides some things. Um, and I think it's just the way that they pop you in and out of an animation. But it's definitely not as bad as it used to be. I mean, you can place the ball. You can, you can kind of float it over top of the linebacker's head, you know, if you happen to hit the right touch pass or what have you. But honestly, I don't feel like just true trajectory. <laughs> it just right. doesn't. It's not there. I feel like the ball is too flat. Like, I, if I'm being honest, and maybe, you know, some, some people are going to laugh, saying, hey, you're supposed to be a gamer. But I'm going to be honest for a moment. I shouldn't have to always hold high pass or 
I mean, to me, they, they need to fix that. They need, at least need to make it to where maybe if you press up on the stick, it puts a little elevation on it or something like that. Because there's there's moments where you see what you're looking at and you're trying to fit that ball in there and it, it goes on a line and people are able to undercut it. And it's like, come on, why would you throw it like that? Right. And, and you know, if you if you touch pass it, sometimes it works. But if you lob it, then it floats way too much. Right. But but I will say, as a whole, it is better than it was in previous years. But they they still got a ways to go. Right. It's not on the ugly side, but it's still bad. It's not. We haven't got to that good part of ball trajectory in Madden. We're still in the bad. All right, Smitty. Gameplay wise. What's the one thing you look at and say, nope, you got this wrong. It's still bad. It's got to get fixed. Um, the big thing for me is definitely passing, you know, sim between Sim and I talking about it. I mean, we talk about it a lot, but, like, that's, like, my biggest, hugest thing is the passing. The pass placement. Um, and, like I said earlier, the two-man animation play. Well, what Sim was saying, too. Because... You had it in your catalog. You made it part of your Madden 06 trailer. Like that was like a big time selling point was you had the authentic passing trajectories in your game. And to see that they still don't have it in there yet. Yeah, they freed up the animations in a certain instance. They let, it looks more like of a, um, like when you throw those jump balls, they try to limit it to a degree, the two man and I'm triggering, but it still triggers and it still is an annoying thing. So it's like not having a true organic pass control. Like if you play, you know, Sim and I have demonstrated, if you play NHL or if you play FIFA, everything is freed up. If you wanted to manually lead with pass controls, like you have that ability. And it's like, it's not like how it was in Madden 17, where it's just, you could just throw the ball any old kind of way and lead them. You actually had controls that you could use, but also player ability factored into it. So even though you could manually do a lot of stuff, it's still factored in your player's abilities. So it's like, if Madden gave us that kind of control, with the animation library that they have, just free it up to showcase that 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 visual representation of in independence and player awareness. Because like Sim has shown, I've shown it streaming FIFA, playing it, videos and such. In jump ball situations, that's wide out DB interaction. That's that's how it should be. All animations, excuse me, all animations are independent of each other. And yet, when players are feeling where they're at, they do the animations. Like, they're 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 trying to box each other out, squeeze in between, all of that. And they locate the ball and attack it, respectively. And it's like, you know, as offense or defense. So it's like, if Madden would just do the exact same thing, like, they should have that now. You know what I'm saying? It should, we shouldn't be at this far back of a stage with it. So, like, that, that to me has been like the big glaring thing like it's kind of a mess between two points it's the passing and the the inorganic element right. of madden that's the problem too much two-man anim play i would love to see the trenches be freed up mm. like how we had in batbreaker i would love to see edge rushers if they really got the step that you you can literally see it like Games like FIFA, NHL, and Pez, you see the tale of why somebody was able to perform certain actions. You could go into the replay and actually look and say, okay, like you're not looking at a two-man anime and say, oh, well, this is what happened. It's, it's like this player had this edge, and this is why the ball was able to be kicked and fit through that hole between the guy's leg because he tried to slide tackle, and the ball just so happened to go between his legs. And it's like you can see what happened it's not a force animation sequence where the ball just all of a sudden gets on a tether and it goes on a rope you know everything is factored in so we would love to see madden showcase that 
And then now you're talking about a more dynamic game overall where you could have players that don't have high ratings like in FIFA and they can still be effective. You don't have to have all 99 whatever to be effective. So, you know, it, it, football just being a compartmentalized sport like that, you should be able to do that kind of stuff. And you can't do it with Madden because everything is still streamlined. So, so, so let me peel back a couple things to what Smith yeah, said. Because yeah. you, 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 you mentioned Madden 06 and some things that they put as far as how they promoted the game. And we still don't have those things in Madden. Is that frustrating to you guys when you see... Uh -huh. When you look back, even at stuff where we look back at previous Maddens, where we've had the ability to do things and then it's gone and we're begging for it to come back. Is that is that frustrating? And then you also talked about other games in the EA platform like NHL where we see things working and it's like, why can't we get that in our game that we have over here with football? Why is why is it different when it's NHL versus Madden? Why are we not seeing those things? Are those things that you think are in the bad category for, for EA and Madden? Man, absolutely. And I'll I'll keep it short and sweet as to why. Even if we even if we don't go back to 06, because Smitty knows my story about 06. You probably heard it too. And I was hook, line, and sinker. Saw the trailer. Oh my God, I'm buying a 360. <laughs> I mean, at this at that time, I didn't know that it was an illusion. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I got caught out there with that. So that's one thing. But if we go back to Madden 25, Ignite Engine, yep. and the talk of shared technology, I will never let them off the hook for that. Shared technology. Because my idea would be, and again, I don't, I'm not an engineer. I don't know how you build these things. But to me, if I had a conglomerate that's called EA Sports, the structure of the way the game works is the same for all of my games. The only thing that would be different is the respective sport. Meaning, when you see these things in FIFA, like Smitty said, I got a video on the channel right now showing you how this guy in FIFA is boxing the defender out. He's looking for the ball, putting himself in position. That's DB and wide out interactions right there. So it is, it, it's so frustrating to see the non-business stuff on display, if you know what I mean. Because we know why Madden is not really where it needs to be, because it doesn't seem to be the priority for that individual game, for whatever reason. So when you see the, the stuff that's not business-related, meaning the gameplay that can actually come out, when you look at FIFA or NHL, and I'm not saying those games are perfect, but we're just talking about just so your audience knows as well, when me and Smitty make these comparisons, we're just talking about basic stuff. Physics, player interactions, AI. We can look at any sports game and compare those things. And that's what makes it so frustrating, man. Shared technology. Why doesn't the... And that's a game that's on grass, too. I know it's not you know, as physical as football, but the actions are right there. Right. Why don't we have that type of player interaction, the reduction or, you know, elimination of two-man, on-the-fly AI, as it seems. We just don't have that in Madden, and I, I don't get it. And, and why why don't we have that? Is there, is there, because like you talked about, you know, in FIFA, you see the things that you could bring to Madden animation wise and and engine wise to where it would work in the football game why doesn't ea take that opportunity to make madden that much better is it just because this game is just so popular regardless what product we put out that it's just going to it's just going to sell ea still going to make a billion dollars it's okay that we don't have everything perfect do you feel that there's sometimes that mindset maybe at ea of We've got a good thing going. Let's not try and do anything extra. Mm. Yeah. It's 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 just like that. Because see, look, this is the thing. When EA EA doesn't have to sell a lot of copies. Because the ultimate team stuff. 
even though a handful of people complain, it's like a lot of these people that complain are buying it. You know, they're they're buying the packs, they're buying the bundles, they're doing all of that, even though they're mad. They're mad at pack odds. They're not mad at buying the packs in principle. You see what I'm saying? So it's like they're still going to do it anyways. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's EA is not bothered with it because they're the only ones there. Yeah, 2K is coming with the game. We don't know what it's going to be like. We don't know how it's going to be, you know, made, whatever. Right. But there is no direct threat at the moment. Even though EA did say, like, think of it like this. EA said, EA said on Twitter, you know, when they made the announcement and 2K said they got the player and the team licenses, EA jumped up real quick and said, hey, 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 remember, guys, we're the only ones that can make a simulation football title. And even though that's like saving face, it's like that presence, it's not exactly alarming. I mean, look what EA did this year. You know, it's not an alarming thing for them to jump up and want to fix stuff and make things way better because there's no true present threat business wise to them. It's just like when you look at uh, what happened with Star Wars, I brought this up on the show before. EA has to, I said this before, EA has to shoot themselves in the foot, like major shot to the foot in order for them to do an about face and really get right. Because that's what Star Wars did with Battlefront 2. They tried to loot box and make, they tried to force the hand of the consumer, uh, unlike they did the first game. People caught that off the demo or the beta, whatever they did, and they got absolutely reamed out. So they rolled everything back, got rid of the 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 uh, the season passes, got rid of all that. They made they got rid of all the loot boxing, made stuff free, all of that. And it got to the point where um, now even uh, massive the people that made Division Two now they're making an uh, open world Star Wars game. But you saw EA jump on Twitter and say, "Hey, hey, hey! Remember, we still got games coming out that we're making." But EA dropped the ball. You see what I'm saying? So it's like they have to business-wise shoot themselves in the foot because they did it with that, and they did it with that, uh, what was that, Rogue Squadrons or whatever that game was? That game flopped. So it's like they have to belly flop in the public eye in a major way with Madden, and that's going to be very hard for them to do, Yeah. seeing where the game is at at this point and how much the, the overall community accepts this game despite how they shortchange it. Right. So, and, and and of course we we want to stay with 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 Madden, but I got to ask this question: We, we saw an announcement of NCAA coming out. How right does EA have to get with NCAA? Oh man! And it cannot be Madden twenty two with college teams. It, it can't be Madden twenty three with college teams. How right does EA have to get NCAA simple? Man, here's the here's the problem. And first of all, they have to get it 150 percent right. But my immediate concern is, you know, there's rumors already out there, and I'm gonna just say it. It's probably not a rumor. Me and Smitty have been in that building. I'm sure this is gonna be the case. The rumor is it will be using Madden's engine. Yeah. No surprise to us because me and Smitty have been down there when we're testing Madden, and we go upstairs and. Or not even go upstairs. <laughs> we change the, the screen that we're on and we flip it to NCAA and we test that. But we've been telling people for years it's the same engine, it's the same gameplay team. Matter of fact, NCAA 14 was made by the same Madden 25 people. It's just for whatever reason, you know, a lot of us, we preferred, I guess, the way NCAA was playing. But me and Smitty have seen that, that very game in the worst state being in that studio. But I was hoping that maybe NCAA would come on a new engine that both it and Madden would be on. Maybe that's a possibility. Right. But right now, man, how I feel, I feel we're already looking at college football. <laughs> you play <laughs> face of the franchise and all. That's, that's, what, that's what it's going to be. I mean, yeah. you know, hopefully all the bells and whistles will be there in terms of, you know, the atmosphere and all that stuff, of course. But right. 
I have no doubt in my mind that they will be on the same gameplay engine or game engine, whatever you want to call it, whether it's this one or there's a, some totally new reconstructed thing that they have that's going to come for both of them when, you know, NCAA does premiere. All right, let's let's flip to the franchise side now for for what did EA really mess up here in the bad segment? Um, because th- this is what I mean. This is what drives the DML network. It drives our, our our franchise, and I think there's a lot of things we can talk about in this segment with bad. Um, and, and and Smitty, I'm gonna let you go first. What is something in franchise mode? that EA tried to do, but they just completely messed it up. Uh, weekly prep. No, uh, weekly preparation. I mean, once again, it, it, it feels, it feels like they just added, you know, instead of adding A, B, and C, like how they had, how they had, how it's always been basically, it's just been basically A, B, C, like straightforward. They just added one A. You know what I'm saying? You got A and then one A. B and then B B one. C and then C one. Like that's how it all feels. It, it doesn't feel like something that makes me want to um be concerned about weekly preparation. How my guys are prepared going up against this game. What I do practice wise, like everything doesn't. F- there's no real like. There's no stakes, right? You know, uh, but that's how the system has been. When and, and you know that's going even deeper in the player progression and core gameplay and how it all translates on the field and stuff like that. So it's just like it's a trickle effect. Right. Um, what you do off the field should affect it and it's just like I said like I said earlier it's a bare bone ad but it there's no meat on the bone that makes me care like 2k5 made me care weekly preparation was completely different you know what I'm saying you could get guys injured you could rehab them possibly bring them back but depending upon how hard you rehab if you try to rehab them too tough you could mess them around and take them out even longer which is something EA had back in Madden 08. You know, but once again, you're talking about a franchise mode then where there were stakes. It mattered how you tried to progress your team. But we don't have that here. So, uh, but I was, but weekly preparation is just a mundane ad. It's something they could check off and say, hey guys, we gave you this this week. Right, you right. Know? And you wanted it, so so we got it. And it, like they could say that, but Smitty, there's no real value. Do you think there's a lot of that instance in the franchise mode where they said, "Okay, guys, you asked for this, we gave it to you. Why are you still complaining?" But when you look at the things they gave you, it's like you asked for a ham sandwich and they gave you bread and mustard and said, "Look, this is this is what you're gonna get now. We may add the other things later on." Yeah. It's right. That's exactly how it feels. They they gave us a game with a skeleton kind of implementation. And even though, yeah, I listen listening to the podcast and everything they did before the game came out was a good service. I appreciate that. But those conversations don't translate into how the game feels and how the mode translates the right. gameplay or adds to it. You know, it, it all has to go together. Like the the gameplay is the tree trunk, the stump, the roots, the branches, and all that. The branches, the leaves, all that good stuff is what your modes are supposed to be. Especially in a franchise mode, like it's supposed to be the ultimate complement to the gameplay on a deeper level. And it's more of they can technically say on stage, "Hey, we did this," but. You didn't do it well at all. And right. that's where the big separation, the problem is going to be at. So, All right, Sim, what in franchise mode did they just not get right? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to go to the big one that everybody was waiting for. Well, it's, it's a two-part answer. So I'm going to give a very small answer in the beginning. 
that they didn't get right. And I'm going to say the free agency stuff, contract restructuring and all of that as a caveat. And the reason why I'm saying that is because those are also the things that we've wanted along with scouting. So right. we're not touching that at all. That was a miss. But scouting is my main answer. Because am I the only one that feels like <laughs> it's still not doing nothing? It, it it just doesn't feel like you have any control. Like yes, you 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 basically are at the mercy of of the system to go and find a player. At least in the old system, I could pick who I wanted to scout. Versus now, it's just like it's 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 like you're a ghost in the whole system, and you're relying on Madden to take care of you. And I just feel like, especially Sim, because we've seen a scouting system in NCAA that was so more in depth and we've seen it in previous Madden so more in depth. Why was it so difficult to get this right? And it feels like they just, again, okay, Madden community, you cried about it. You complained about it here. We're giving it to you. All right, now be quiet. That's what I'm saying, man. It's, it's so half done. It's you put in you every now and then every so often weeks or whatever, you have to change this, change that, but you don't, it's not enough information. And they could have went so far with it. They could have had it to where your scouts is coming back and telling you this every week. Oh, hey, we went and checked out this game. Oh, there's a big game between these two prospects. Like, it's so much stuff they could have layered on top of that that would have made it feel like it was living. And that's that's to me is the miss. It doesn't feel like anything is happening. Unless, unless I'm not, you know, seeing all of the nuance, but I don't even really see the news section really having a big effect on it like they said it would. And Do you I think it, it was rushed? Like, it, it wasn't ready to go, but this was kind of, you know, when the hashtag came out, Fix Madden Franchise, and of course, the scouting update took a long time to get to us. It wasn't like it, it was even ready to go when the game dropped. But do you feel like this was just another rushed piece? Because there are a lot of franchises that had to wait to even start or had to restart when the scouting actually dropped into the game. And we're talking months after the game comes out before franchises could even start. Yeah. Do you feel like this was just kind of a hushed feature of, okay, we hear them, we hear them complaining, we hear problems going on in the Madden community, let's force this out even though it's not ready to go? I do. And it, the fact that it took so long to get out lets me believe that. And, and it's funny because, you know, you saw a lot of people in the community saying, no, I'd rather them take their time. But again, me and Smitty know better because we've been there. So we, we know how things are strategically planned and when things should be there. The fact that that didn't come out and launch with the game gave me reason for concern right off the bat. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> This lets me know that it's, it's nowhere near what we think it is because they didn't dedicate a whole cycle to it, number one. So that was the that was the thing for me right there. I just wanted to see what it was going to be. Remember, they didn't even show us what it was until way late in the promotion cycle. They wouldn't right. even talk about it because they at that point, they probably didn't know what they were going to deliver. And it's, it's it's a miss. I mean, I appreciate it, but it's it's, it's really... Oh, and let me ask this question, X and, and Smitty. But maybe I'm doing this wrong. But correct me if I'm wrong. How do you... What, how do you do your draft board now? I feel like I have no control over... And you don't. Win. Oh, my goodness. And you don't have control. It's, it's, it's like they took the good... Some of the good things in Madden 21 and replaced it with this whole scouting package... And it's to me, to me, it's not even bare bones. To me, it feels as a franchise guy that plays both of their modes. I play both mud. Mud is part, most of my content as a streamer, and then I play franchise with my brotherhood here in the dynasty. And I feel like in franchise mode, it's a slap in the face the way this scouting thing came out. Not only the timing of it, but then when you bring it out to not deliver on just basic things. Yeah. To make it, we talk about that onion, to make me have to pull back layers to find that guy. Now, I will say this. There are more quality players in the draft, so you have an opportunity 
to get a good player in round four, five, six than you did in previous Maddens. But you don't know who those guys are because you can't scout that deep into the rounds or get a draft board and figure out, can this guy fit my scheme? That's the problem for me, is that it's not all-encompassing. It doesn't allow me total control as a GM of a franchise team to say, okay, I got to find some talent to fix this on my team. I can't do it in free agency, so I got to do it in the draft. And I don't have control to find those guys through weeks one through 18 in the regular season and in the playoffs as I'm scouting. I don't have that ability to build my team up. It's kind of hit or miss when I go to draft. And so that's the thing that that frustrates me. So my question to you guys is, and Smitty, I'll let you go first here. Do you feel like maybe you would feel better if, if they would just say, okay, look, scouting is not right. We don't want to give it to you half done, a quarter done. In my in my opinion, this is about 10% of what scouting could actually be. Would you rather EA say, listen, we let you guys down, but in Madden 23, we're going to bring you the full scouting as we see it here at EA, and we want to make it so it's right, and it's 100% right before we push it out, versus them just saying, okay, let's delay scouting, and then let's just push out whatever we got. Um, I think that uh, they got to show it. You know what I mean? Like, look, look, what, what did WWE 2K22 put out a long time ago? They said, they, they said, hey, yo, it hits different. That's their tagline, right? So they are going to say, so if you saying it after you fumbled the last game, because the game's coming out in March for a reason because of all the background hubbub that went on and they had a bad game release. So if you're saying this game going to hit different, you got to show us right. that it's got to hit different. So my thing is with yeah. Madden is that correlation. Excuse my son. But you, you got to... The game has to hit different. So you got to show us. And that's one thing EA don't do. They do excellent lip service. Sean Grady, that's our dude. Cool Cat, all that good stuff. But the lip service did not translate into what we got. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you have to show us that you can do it with the product. Hey, look, look, NFL 2K5, take, uh, excuse me, 2K5 came out. You didn't hear no hype story. <laughs> they just did it. You know, Madden, over the years with their legacy with franchise mode stuff, they spoke on it and they just expanded on stuff. Built on, built on, built on. Now... There, it's being pumped up like, man, we put all this work in, and oh man, we got all the. It's like the lip service is is out, is hustling, out hustling the actual product, the, the product. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, you need to do the polar opposite. The product needs to out hustle the lip service. So you got to give it to us, man. Because look, listening to Sim, listening to you guys, College Hoops 2K8 still the standard, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's how you do a dynasty. You want to see prospects? Yeah. This scout went here. That scout went to his home and visited. Matter of fact, you could play the scout's game if you want to. So you can actually play him. And if he's playing against other another guy, you're going to play. They're going to play each other. And you can see what these guys can do. It's like, dude, they had this in a game on 360 and PS3. And here we are. We... We got all these limitations and small windows, and it has to come as a title update, not as part of just general production. So it's like, come on, dog. And, and once again, business. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get sidetracked off of, it, off of what we're going at here, but it's just the business part is the main factor here. So it's like, I, I hear, that's why Sim and I, we always say like the devs, we understand it ain't about the devs at this point. I wish it was. I wish it was. I wish we could just simply say that it, the, the, the studio's giving them the resources and these dudes just aren't following through. But no, their hand is forced at the end of the day. And it's like this This is why we keep getting this shortchanged, watered down stuff, but they got to deliver. Like 23, 23 and beyond, they have to really showcase those signs of life. I mean, you know, otherwise... That SGO article, even though EA went on IGN and downplayed it, let's see how much 
smoke SGO uh, SGO is honestly blowing then. Prove uh, how you how you make SGO look bad is you make sure these title updates or if the updates are coming for this year, you make sure they hit and they hit hard. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, not, I'm so glad Smitty brought up the SGO article. You know? I'm I'm so glad Smitty because does the track record show that SGO was blowing smoke? No. no. Or that EA was blowing smoke? It shows EA was blowing smoke right it's now. Yeah, man. <laughs> so like, it's, I mean, it's, we let's. I mean, I mean, there's no way as a Madden community and Smitty and Sim, we've been on shows before where I remember us saying, "Man, Madden 21 got a hit." Oh, Madden 22 got it hit. I mean, we've been saying this year after year after year in this community of you guys got to deliver on this and you got to finally deliver on this. But was SGO correct? I mean, they come out and basically put the f- fire on EA Speed and say, listen, you guys have dropped the ball so many times. Your turnover ratio, you have no assist whatsoever. We got to stop putting you in the game at some point. When is that going to change? I mean, Sim, just like I asked Smitty, would you rather EA just say, look, it's not right. Be honest with us. It's not right. The scouting thing is it's not ready. We can't put this in a game. We put this in a game. Y'all are going to murder us on social media. You're you're not going to be happy with this scout update. Let's just hold it off until we get it right. Why don't they do that? Do they feel like that's going to upset us more if they say we're not going to put this out, it's not right versus we want to get it 100% correct and deliver on the product you expect from a triple A company making a over a billion dollars as an organization. Yeah, man, I think simply put, they feel like they don't have to do that because they've had so many opportunities to do it. And you think about Sean Grady standing up there and admitting, oh, we dropped the ball. You could continue with that theme. Because EA and Madden in particular is in a position that not many games can say that they're in. They sell regardless. It, it's not going to affect your bottom line if you come out and say that. Because all of those people that is not Smitty, Axe, and Sim, they still going to buy the game anyway. <laughs> so you might as well continue to cater verbally to the community that's complaining. Right. You might as well. And just tell us what it is. Because at this point, man, a lot of people are, are giving up hope. But they I don't know. I don't think they care, man, at the top level. They don't. The only reason why they came out, you know, of course, they had to say something when the topic trends number one on Twitter. That got the attention of a lot of people. Right. That, that's that's like, the problem, though, right, Sam? It takes... Yeah. It takes something trending on Twitter to get the attention of the guys on that next level, right? I I, I think, you know, when Smitty talked about it, Sim, the devs, you guys know the devs probably better than anybody that we've ever had on the show outside of us having a dev on the show. You guys know those guys. So you know their heart, you know their passion. Those guys on that next level holding them back is is holding Madden back from being the franchise, being the game that we all expect it to be. And uh, in your opinion, Sim, is that if those guys on that next level don't have that passion that we have, it's not going to change, is it? It's not going to change. And there has to be, at this point, a major effect. Um, Twitter was one. The next one is competition. That's it. The only thing that's going to change it. Because... Again, if you look around the landscape of other sports games and even just games that EA Sports produces, they're capable of making better products. So, you know, because people always say, they, I call it the lazy approach, the lazy cop-out. People will say, oh, they're lazy. They just don't want to do it. Oh, they're not capable. No, no, that's not true. They are capable. Remember those games we used to play? Madden 05, <laughs> Madden 04, they had all that depth. What about FIFA? What about NHL? They are capable. Like, it's showing you right in your face that they're just not doing it. They could do it. They're just not doing it. And it's going to take some type of event like the Twitter trending or competition. Until that happens, they're going to continue to go at their pace. Unless somebody way up the top just has a change of heart. We got to get a Madden guy at the very top somewhere. That's a diehard Madden guy for it to change, in my opinion. I just don't see that happening. 
So we'll just continue having shows like uh, Madden 22, The Good, Bad, and The Ugly. And so let's get into the ugly, Sim. Mm, mm, what is the thing that you look at Madden 22 and you say, who in their right mind said that this was okay? The biggest thing has to be, and I hate to say this, because the gameplay designer, defensive secondary designer, is probably one of the more, probably the most knowledgeable person in that building, and is I consider him a friend. A Dub, Anthony White. I hate to say this because his name is attached to it, but it's not him. But it is by far zone play and defensive coverage in general. And not just because of the reasons what some people would think. It's just deeper than that. Yes, they have improved a little with these patches, but it, that's not the problem. The problem is, and Smitty says this all the time, they are too mechanical. There's no lot, there's no thinking going on by the player. It, it's, it's really just do this. Don't do anything else. We see it every time we play Madden. How many times has your free safety just watched the guy cross his face? <laughs> Anybody who's ever played football on any level knows closest guy, that's your threat. That is it. I mean, you have your whatever your responsibility is in cover two, cover three, cover four, cover six, cover nine, trap coverage. I could go on and on. Palms, special. It is, there's a lot of different technical things. But on any level of football, the person knows if there's somebody in front of me or in my area, I have to keep my eye on him. Even though we watch NFL football and we see guys blow coverages all the time. I'm not saying it's supposed to be perfect. But in Madden, you can literally watch them do the same thing every single time. And that is the biggest, to me, the worst part of the game, man, is it, it's, there's just no thinking on the fly. And, and, I, and I know people are going to say it's a video game, but no, you can program that. You can program a guy to pay attention to who's coming right at him. Hey, play your responsibility. But if this guy comes in your face, Go where he's going. Anticipate. There's none of that in Matt. That, to me, by far, is the ugliest component of that game at times. It's just pass coverage. It's, it it's, it's real bad. It's been, it's been horrendous. And it was really bad at launch. Like, it was, it was so glaring at launch. Like, you could go back and watch so many videos on YouTube from guys that break down Madden on that level. Um, yeah, I, I think I think I watched Zan put a video out one time and just basically <laughs> annihilated every zone coverage Madden had out, and and literally just showed you what should happen and what happens in the game, and just at the bare basics of what cover two, cover three, cover four, cover six should take place just didn't happen. I think part of that is the reason we've seen so many patches to try and fix that, even to the point Sim where we've seen them say. Okay, we're going to fix just cover three this time. It's so messed up. We can't fix coverages across the board. We're going to just focus on this coverage. And so I think definitely that's, to me, I would agree with you 100%, Sam. It's got to be the ugliest thing about Madden 22 is how your defensive zone coverage works. Blues don't play as blues, purples as... And we've been asking for this Madden after Madden. But Smitty... What is the ugliest thing in Madden 22 that you just say, oh, my God, how did how did you guys check off on this? Man, Sim, Sim, took, Sim took the, the one, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, that's like, I I, I mean, oh, what else can I say? Okay, you know what? On the offensive, on the defensive side there, on the offensive side, it's the same thing I can say. Like, there's no awareness from the wide receiver uh, in terms of what's going on. Like, you see players make a logical plays on the field. Uh, but yet, like what was said, in other video games, you see where the wideout has relative awareness to what's going on, or at least it's manipulated. We visually are manipulated. You know what I mean? Because the way it appears. Stand outside, buddy. The way that the game play feels 
yeah. and looks, oh, he's aware of what's going on, or he's he's going to slap that ball away because the DB will get to it or whatever, or they'll shorten up on their route. Like, these are things that happen. Madden 06, Madden 05, Madden 08, PS2, and Xbox days. If the ball is thrown short, you'll see them shorten on the route and come back. You don't see like how they do now. They just keep running, keep running. The pass is well short. They just keep running, and then they throw their hands up. It's like, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? Like, no awareness. And just like what – and one thing I want to add to Sim, what he said about the defense, because that's the thing that I was going to say. But the defensive thing, I'll say this. I've said since Madden 13, and I've even went in the studio, said it, the safeties always just cut. They only play literally to the zones. And I showcase it in APF and in NFL 2K5. The, you can see the zone graphic, but how they actually move is according to what the offense brings to them in their direction. Do they Do they step in? Do they fall back? Or what? If they're throwing routes underneath, you see the safety step in. If they're if they're coming toward them and they're they're excuse me they're they're running deep routes or semi deep routes or medium, they're gonna fall back some and retreat. But they're not just gonna default into a zone and that's it and just be mechanical with it. They're gonna actually okay. Where's the receiver going? Is he going this way? Is he going that way? Which one? Like they they're in a spot where they gotta make a decision. And that's something Sim says all the time. Like, they got to decide what they're going to do. And that, my thing is, on the offensive side of the ball, you don't see the wideouts make a decision. The DB does it. Like, you guys all see it. Have that defender be on your have that defender be on your left hip. And you throw that crossing pattern. Oh, all of a sudden, that DB is going to dip underneath and go to the right hip and come with the INT. And I'm like, dude, a crossing... Like a crossing route, that, that's a timing pattern. If you know the defense uh, with your wide right receiver, you know the defender is on your left hip, you should be running toward it. You should seal him off. And when I throw it, you run toward it and catch it. And it's like that, there's just like, there's zero awareness yeah, uh -huh. on the wide outside of the ball at all. They just, like Sim said, the way they play their routes just like how the receivers run their routes. I mean, how they play their zones is just like how, like, the, the wideouts run their routes. They just blindly run them. No awareness of a defender present. None of that stuff. But then you see other games showcase those levels of awareness. I mean, play NBA 2K and you playing against LeBron James. Hey, they show it. You got three, four dudes all kind of looking at where's LeBron at on the floor. Like, come on. Like, I, these other games are doing it. Madden's not doing any of that stuff. So, that's my big thing. So, you know, we always talk about offensive line play, and, and you know, we got a guy at EA and Clint that played offensive line in the NFL, and, and we always heard, okay, offensive line play is going to get better. It's going to get better. Do you feel it's at that level, Sim? Do you feel offensive line play is still – it's still not where it needs to be in awareness where your left guard's not blocking anybody. And next thing you know, he's just standing there basically having a party by himself. Yep. It's nowhere near where it should be. Um, part of it is what Smitty said, the awareness. Cause you, you see that also sometimes with pulling guards, fullbacks. It's the same thing I said about the defense. Your biggest threat is whoever crosses your face. I understand we're going to the C gap or whatever, but if somebody blows it up, you have to block that guy. They don't do that. And then also the D line and the offensive line, there's clear, there's no awareness at all. The situation that you just mentioned happens a lot. And also what about, and Smitty knows I've been saying this for years. Why don't the defensive line or defensive players period when they're engaged, why are they not tracking the ball? How many times have you seen a D lineman just stuck in his animation? The running back is right beside him. He pays him no mind. He's only concerned with this interaction. And that's a combination of awareness and two-man sequences. They have to free this stuff up, man. And it's, you know, we said it at, at the top of the show, I think. 
They're so the game is so close. Yeah. All of the things that we mentioned here today, if you allow free flowing animation with however you reduce the two mans, or if you can get rid of them, if you allow physics to be an issue at all times, meaning it has to be accounted for at all times. User control cannot be compromised by sequencing. And you just make the game more aware. We're talking about a whole different experience. This show, we're probably talking about how good of a football game we're playing. If you just do those things. I mean, of course, pass control and all that, that could come down the line. But those are the core essentials, man. The way players interact, their AI, and user control. That's it. Yep. And they right. just have failed to do that. Yeah, exactly. All right, last part of the show. The ugly part of franchise, Sim. What When you play franchise, what do you look at and say, man, this is the... We're going backwards from where we used to be when we had franchise. Hmm. Um... Man, it's a lot. It's, man, it, it's so many things. I will just say the lack of attention I have to pay to the game when I'm not on the field. That covers so many things. Yeah. We, we already talked about scouting feels dead. Resigning is dead. <laughs> There's nothing... There's no negotiating. It's nothing. I don't know anything. I don't know why this guy may or may not want to sign. What's important to him? Does he take the hometown discount? No contract restructuring. Can I can't go to him and say, hey, we got a cap situation. Can we work out something? I can't front load. I can't back. I can't do the Steeler way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't replicate my beloved still away and Matt there's no way to do that where we just gonna give you a signing bonus and we're good with paying your contract but we ain't really gonna give you no whole lot of upfront money even though TJ Watt probably blew that up but it's just it does it's not a living I'm in a, I'm in an online franchise right now you know with the sim standard franchise and I I don't feel like I have to do anything until I know I'm going to play a game in 20 minutes. Okay, let me jump on and do game prep and nothing. There's nothing that makes me feel like I have to pay attention to this game. The app isn't good. You have to still be on console to draft. And on top of that, X, we don't even have a draft board that I can set if yeah. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> So I, I'll, I'll just say it like that, man. There's so many things that I can't pinpoint. One is just no. You you hit the nail on the head, though, right? It's it's not, man. I gotta look at my franchise today because I got a game tomorrow. I got I gotta I gotta do my practice. I gotta do my scouting. I gotta. There's none of that. Like you said, okay, I'm about to play a game in 20 minutes. Let me just jump on here and, and sim through this stuff real quick and get ready for this game. There there's no layers to the franchise mode, and. I think they added fake layers to it and said, okay, here's scouting, here's coaching carousel, here's all these things, but it didn't really add any depth to it. It was just all surface. And when you actually started to look at it and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't any better than what we had last year. It's just extra buttons I got to push now in between weeks to get to the part where I get to play the game. There's, there's no logic to it. Like you said, I can't go to a player and say, look, I, I, we got to sign these three guys in the next two years. I need to restructure your contract. That happens every single year in the NFL. It is a. It happens almost every single week in NFL. Some guys getting his his contract restructured so they can free money up for something else. Yep. You just can't do it. I can't go to a player and the player says, "Man, I really want to play for this organization. I'm going to give you that hometown discount." That's just something real small, something little. I don't want to talk about a TJ Watt thing. I'm still salty about that because the Cowboys <laughs> drafted Taco Charlton two oh, picks man. before that, and, and you could have had TJ Watt. <laughs> I, I, it's just one of those things. I'm still salty about it. As a Wisconsin Badger fan, I, I yelled and screamed, please draft TJ Watt, and he's turned into the monster that he's been. All right, Smitty, what in franchise mode do you think is just ugly, and they got to fix it immediately? Oh, 
I mean, the vague answer would be everything, and that wouldn't even be <laughs> that wouldn't even be wrong to say. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, ooh, as far as something in franchise mode that I can say that they need to do immediately, uh, I would say. I would say scouting. Yeah, I mean, I could go with I could go with scouting slash weekly prep, but they got they kind of go hand in they kind of have equal value to me. But I'll say I'll go with scouting. You know, um, being able to go in depth with you know uh, following the story of what's going on with players. Mm-hmm. Uh, going through the collegiate season, things like that. I mean, heck, you can't even play the senior bowl for crying out loud. You used to be able to do that. You used to be able to upload your NCAA prospects, scout them, play the senior bowl. Then they get drafted and all that stuff. I think it's in that order, but still, that's something we don't have. So making it, and and it's, it's once again, making the scouting matter making it feel like uh you know using these resources or being able to i mean i know it's kind of pulling from college hoops i know they can't do it this way but i would love to see it where you if you could actually play their games like they ain't gotta have the most fancy looking jerseys but the bottom line is just that you can actually play a prospect's game like Let's say if there's only if there's like four or five games, like you can you can see how four or five prospects of yours actually play. If you're looking for a replacement center or tackle or D lineman or you know whatever position they play, you can actually play with their team and see how that player performs. Like let's say they got an impact star on them, like NCAA, so that way you always know who they are, where they're at on the field, and you can actually see what they can do. Like that stuff would be sweet because not you know it's it's another level of immersion, but then I'm I'm it makes me care about my scouting that much more. Like we you guys said earlier about a draft board, it, a draft board it matters when you're when you, it, it matters when you're playing amongst peers. It doesn't matter at all when you're playing yourself, and that's me. Like I I want to be able to have a offline fully immersive franchise mode experience. And, you know, doing that to scouting, like giving it a revamp like that, that where you add some elements that make me, you know, make me want to further immerse in it instead of just simulating X through on to the next part. That would be huge for me. Yeah. And and my biggest problem is we've had that before. We've had Madden's where you look at the franchise and you, you, you spent time worried about your franchise and, and you went throughout your day and you're like man I, I gotta get I gotta take care of my franchise when I get to the house I got I gotta get this player scout I got there, there's been that in the game and it's just slowly eroded away and now we're starting to get these pieces I will say this I don't want it all to be ugly do you think sim that there is potential with what they put in the game to actually have those layers that we talk about huge potential and it's so funny, man, when, you know, people kill me when I say that. So, you know, the Madden opposers. Yeah. But it, that is, that's the conversation every year. This game as a whole has enormous potential. And putting those things in place, you know, with the... And one thing that I forgot is the, um, you know, the scouts and all of that stuff and the coordinators. I mean, there, there's a foundation now for you to have an extended staff and make that more impactful. You know, like, to me, another miss. How do the coordinators not play a factor into play calling and scheme and all of that? That right there, that was a huge miss. But, yes, the potential is there. You have scouting in there now, so all you have to do is, like Smitty just said, flush it out. Flush out all of those things that you put in franchise this year and build on top of that. Then we're getting back to what we're used to. But you, you just have to continue with it. And that's that's my only concern. I don't know how invested they are because we've seen, even in gameplay, we've seen features that come in, that come into Madden and they're just they're not touched. You know, like you mentioned it as well. 
when they talked about trenches way, way, way back. Remember, I think that might have been Madden 25. It was actually a bullet point. War in right. the trenches. Yep. Nothing has changed. <laughs> Literally nothing has changed the way that they interact in the trenches. So that's what I'm saying, man. The potential is there. It's just they got to flush it out. Yeah, and I think Smitty hit the nail on the head earlier when he said it, it's it's got to hit different, right? You, you've you talked about it. You've talked about it. You've talked about it. You've promised. You've promised. You've done all these things. Now it's time to deliver. I mean, I think we're I think all three of us were at that point now where I don't even listen to the lip service anymore. Like, I, I just don't pay attention to that because everything that you've told me was going to be in the game and how great it's going to be is no longer there. It's it's not a, it's not part of the game. So now I just got to see it happen. And that's that's what has to happen for me, Madden 23 going forward. I just need to see execution. And so I think that's where we're all at. Execute on the game and I will continue I will continue to ride the EA train as long as possible. I just need to see execution. All right. But I I, I want to make sure we keep it short. We 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 don't we won't I, mean, I know Sim, Smitty, you and I could get in a room and like we could talk Madden for hours and hours. Um, and we've done that. We've done that before. Um, but I want to make sure we we cut it at the right time. We allow guys to to enjoy the video. Put your comments down. What did you think was good, bad and ugly for Madden 22? Because we left a lot on the table. Like Sim said, we could probably do episode two, three and four of this. <laughs> but we want to hear your guys comments as well. What did they get right? What did they get close, and what did they just completely mess up on? And uh, we'll respond to each of those comments. Sim, man, appreciate you jumping on the show, man. Always a pleasure when we get to do something with you, man. Um, have, a, have a great Saturday, man. Appreciate you, my guy. Absolutely, man. And one last thing I just wanted to say to people, because you mentioned it when you said you'll ride the train as long as you can. There's nothing wrong with playing Madden, guys. Yeah. Don't, don't let people fool you into that. You are a grown person, grown <laughs> man, grown woman. You can play the game and not like certain... I mean, it's, it's just a game at the end of the day. Don't Absolutely. be so serious about it. All right. Smitty, man, appreciate you jump on the show. Always good to catch up with my guy Smitty and Sim, man. Appreciate you, Smitty, taking time out your day. I'll let you get back to that family for sure. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Always a pleasure. No doubt. All right, guys. That's going to do it for us here on the DML Network. The good, the bad, the ugly Madden 22. We appreciate y'all hanging with us. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, thumbs up on the video, and put your comments down, and we'll make sure we respond to those. On behalf of the DML Network, it's your boy, Expert, and we out.